Today I will go through map projections and geographic reference systems. Uh, this will likely be review in large part from other geospatial courses, um, but it's good to you know think about projections in the context of maps and you know in every course that we take to can sharpen our skills with projections because they are kind of abstract and one of the more difficult aspects of geospatial studies in general is kind of conceptualizing how to work with projections, how to perform different functions of changing projections in software, etc. Um, so today I'll go through some kind of quick things about thinking about the world in spherical terms. Uh, you know, one of the more difficult aspects of thinking about projections or conceptualizing projections is we're so often accustomed to looking at our geographic data in, t in the planar two-dimensional versions, whether that's through our screens or through maps, that it can be difficult for us to conceptualize the world as this three-dimensional sphere. Uh, we'll talk about the difference between projection coordinate systems and geographic coordinate systems, uh, much of which will probably be review. I'll go over the specific ArcGIS projection tools that we have at our disposal within the software. Um, I'll go through a couple of different types of projections and what different types of projections are used for, and then I'll briefly introduce our discussion forum assignment. So this is a map that I like that I think does a good job of demonstrating why it's difficult to think about the world in spherical terms. So this map is all the places, all the coastline places on Earth where if you are standing and you look directly out, directly straight to the line of sight, that the first body of land that you would next see is either Australia or the Oceanic countries or New Zealand. You know, I think that what's really interesting about that is, you know, the way that we depict maps is a compromise projection. And I'll go over that a little bit more in detail later. But the way that we t depict maps transforms that three-dimensional surface to a two-dimensional surface, and oftentimes we do so to prioritize land mass, right? And so this map depicts land as a much higher proportion of the Earth's surface than it really is. In actuality, land is 29% and ocean is 71% of the Earth's surface. But if you were to look at this map, that wouldn't necessarily come through because um, land mass is prioritized in the orientation of the projection. Um, and so in that case, and especially you know here since we exaggerate the extent of Antarctica on the bottom, we have a hard time conceptualizing how a line of sight or a straight line, you know, stemming from New York, for instance, how that would circle the globe and then pop back out and the first thing you would see would be southern Australia. So it's just a good example of, you know, some interesting ways to think about the spherical nature of the Earth and what challenges that presents when we're kind of trying to make that mental transformation of the three-dimensional to the two-dimensional. And this is a series of maps called Beyond the Sea that uh, cartographer Andy Woodruff at Axis Maps did. And there's a whole kind of article associated with this. So if you're interested in kind of looking at his techniques and how he did the specific calculations for each of these different um, sight lines, you can check that out. It's Beyond the Sea. Yeah, there's a whole NPR article and whatnot on it. Um, another map that I like that kind of helps illustrate the same point is what's known as an antipode map. And so an antipode is the point on Earth, um, and it's direct opposite on the other side of the Earth. So if you were to take, for here in Arcata, if you were to take you know, a rod and just like drill it straight through the Earth to the other side, what would pop out on the other side would be somewhere down here in the ocean south of Madagascar, right? Um, so an antipode map, again, it just kind of helps emphasize how much of the land mass is covered by, or how much of the Earth's surface is covered by land mass versus water, and how that differs a little bit from our most dominant geographic perspectives that we get from looking at two-dimensional maps that are land-centered for the most part. Um, so yeah, this is an antipode map. There's actually a cool tutorial. Um, if you were to Google ArcGIS Pro antipode map, there's like a six-minute YouTube video that shows you how to make this map in ArcGIS Pro if you're so inclined. Okay, so now that we've kind of shifted our brain to think about three-dimensional space versus two-dimensional space, we can talk about some different terminology. So when we're thinking about uh, coordinate systems or how to reference points, of, points on the surface of the Earth, you know, what we most commonly use is what's known as a geographic coordinate system. And this is a framework that allows us to define locations of features 
So at a um, X and a Y coordinate system um, on a model of the Earth. So these models are typically spherical or globe shaped. The units are angular, so they're usually degrees, minutes, seconds. Um, yeah, and so that's our basic geographic coordinate system, right? That allows us to say, here's where this point is in the location of the Earth. And then a projected coordinate system is the transformation of that three-dimensional spherical space to the two-dimensional flat surface, right? And so our projected coordinate system also contains that geographic coordinate system that is transformed using some sort of mathematical projection al algorithm um, into a two-dimensional surface. Here, this difference between the geographic coordinate system and the projected coordinate system. The geographic coordinate system here is depicting a space on that three-dimensional spherical globe with uh, angle. And over here in the projected coordinate system that is transformed to a two-dimensional space and is depicted in meters. Right, meters west of the prime meridian, meters north of the equator. Okay, so if we look into our um, properties of our different data within our ArcGIS Pro software, you know, we can we can find all this information, right? We can see, you know, what our projected coordinate system is, what our linear units are. False easting and false northing are essentially measurements of how the map is shifted from the equator and the prime meridian. So is the center of the map, the default, the center of the map is the equator and the prime meridian intersection, right? Is the map shifted in a way east or north that um, changes the center? And then if we look down here, it also will have our geographic coordinate system. Again, tell you the prime meridian, the datum, the spheroid model, the geographic coordinate system, etc. Okay, and then another piece of terminology, the datum, is a part of the geographic coordinate system that points to which model or which spheroid, spheroid uh, is being used to represent the Earth's surface relative to other models. So since the Earth's surface is not perfectly smooth or round, but it has elevation changes and different types of landforms, there's a bunch of different types of datums or a bunch of different models that are designed to most closely represent the fidelity to the Earth's surface, and those are often localized or regionalized. So for instance, we use different uh, datums that most accurately capture the true Earth's surface with that ellipsoid model, right? And so you'll see like the North American datum set, for example, a NAD 27 or NAD 83. Right, and those will be datums that are most aligned to North America. And so then if you use NAD87, for instance, for Australia, then you'd have, over here, you'd have like a higher degree of variability from what the model is telling you versus what the true Earth surface is telling you. Okay, and so, you know, this, the geographic coordinate system that we look at, that's really the full definition of how we're tying these values right, to locations on the Earth. That includes the datum that's being used, that includes the prime meridian, uh, angular units, etc. So that information tells you all that you need to know about how you're taking these degree, minute, second values and how they're being put onto the Earth. Right, and so all that information is here. WGS is the most common World Geographic System uh, coordinate system model. Default, again, is uh, the prime meridian. Angular units, typically degrees, datum, etc., etc., etc. So it's always good, you know, if you don't know what any of these things are, and the ones at the bottom, the axes and the flattening, those are more kind of like computational uh, mathematical terms, but you should definitely, you know, if you're looking at your data and it's looking weird and you can't quite figure out what's going on, it's you know essential that you're able to kind of go into the coordinate system details of your data layer and kind of try to decipher what's going on and see if anything is not lining up the way it should line up or if something's not looking the way that it should look, right? And so having a kind of a basic understanding of what these terms are, 
how they relate to different aspects of um, kind of how it looks within ArcGIS Pro is essential. Okay, so then the projection itself, right? That's a mathematical formula or a mathematical algorithm that defines how that round geographic coordinate system model is going to be distorted and flattened and squished down onto a two-dimensional flat map. And there's a good video up here um, that I'll post a hyperlink to that kind of shows the process of like cutting a globe open and you know the different things. I'm sure I'm sure you've seen something similar before. Okay, and so then the projected coordinate system is really that full definition of how that round Earth model is projected and squashed onto a flat map. So in addition to the projection itself, which each projection is a different type of algorithm or a different mathematical formula, the projected coordinate system also includes all the information about that geographic coordinate system that the data is stored in, the uh, units, any other sort of parameters, the false easting, the central meridian, standard parallels, any other sort of like information that takes that projection and centers it on a different part of the earth, for instance, or whatever kind of the parameters are. And so if we look at our projected coordinate system, right, and what, what the activity that you'll do in the discussion forum this week is look at a bunch of different uh, projections and kind of go through and do a little research about the history and the usage and the type of map that each type of projection system makes and um, why and you just pick one to kind of go with. Um, but for instance, in this case, this is a molly wide projection. It'll tell you the linear units of that projection. It'll tell you any sort of information here as well about whether that central point or the center focus of the projection has been moved east or north what that central meridian is, and what coordinate system it's tied to, what geographic coordinate system it's tied to. Okay, so that's all kind of like background information about projections, stuff that I'm sure is um, what you've heard before in other classes and matches your general knowledge of the difference between geographic and projected coordinate systems. So, you know, what's most pertinent to us in the process of making maps and working with geospatial data is really understanding the difference between the Define projection tool, the pro the project tool, and the projection on the fly process within ArcGIS Pro. So these there's three different ways that you can like mess with your or change your projection in ArcGIS Pro. And sometimes depending on what you need to do, that changes specifically what type of process you're supposed to be doing, or what type of tool you're supposed to be doing. So the first one, the define projection tool, and so this is the one if you go into your toolbox and you say define projection, this is when your data does not have a known coordinate system. And so in this case, you have a bunch of uh, data and it doesn't, it's not actually tied to any sort of geographic coordinate system, so it can't place that data on the map. Um, this is most often the case if you use like GPS data that you collect in the field, for instance. Um, or you'd snag latitude, longitude data off of a database, like a point of interest database or something like that. And so you have the X, Y coordinates that are in latitude, longitude, or in degree, minute, seconds, but then it's not actually tied. The data file itself does not have a known coordinate system to it. And so simply this tool is often you have your point data. You go in and you say, give this WGS84 as its defined coordinate system. And then that will allow the, the points to actually get placed in the software to know where those points are. So the define projection tool adds information to your data, essentially. The project tool, which is what I see a lot of students using, is they, when the instructions say change projection, you'll go in and you say project. So often, what you're doing with the project tool is you're actually converting the metadata of the file itself to a new coordinate system. So every shape file has what's known as a projection file associated with it. And that projection file, which is linked through 
the file structure to the shape file itself. That projection tool has the, has the projection that that data is stored in. Right, and so if you use the project tool within ArcGIS Pro, that's gonna actually convert that projection file to a new projection. So it changes the data or rewrites the data. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, this is not necessarily what we need to do because we're just making a map where we just need to change the projection for the purpose of map making, but we don't actually want to change the data structure as a whole. So, you know, whenever you're using the project tool, oftentimes we'll use this if we're um, creating a geo database, we want to make sure everything in the geo database is of the same projection so that the next person that uses that data can, it'll be in a, a standardized format for them. So often we'll use the project tool if we're working on a collaborative project, if we have a workflow that's defined by an organization. You know, this is much more common in kind of professional applications. Whereas most of the time in lab-based or kind of one-off type of things like we do in cartography or that we do in um, a lot of geospatial kind of assignments at this level, this tool will actually kind of create more problems than it will solve in a lot of cases. Our lab for next week will have a, um, it will have a kind of walkthrough of how to use these three different functionalities within ArcGIS Pro. So it gives a little bit more definition and clarity to the different, the reasons and the different processes for each one. Um, then the final one, the project on the fly. And this is what ArcGIS does behind the scenes. And this is what we most commonly use in our projects. Um, we do this, basically this is where you set the data frame, set the coordinate system of the data frame, and then all the other data that you bring in to ARC will then automatically project into that, um, into that new, or that defined coordinate system. So this is how, you, how what we do most of the time in class is you just right click the data frame in your contents window on the left hand side, go down say, uh, change coordinate system, you know, pick the coordinate system that best, best meets the purposes of that map, and then all the data that you bring in will automatically convert, not permanently, but just on the fly to that uh, defined, pro defined projection or defined coordinate system for the purpose of that mapping application, right? And when you save your map and you save your project, it's saved that way, but it doesn't rewrite the data. So if you were to take that data and to load it into a new, new map project, it would be in the original uh, projection coordinate system that the data was originally stored in. So this is what we want to do most of the time because we're not rewriting the data, right? We're keeping it in its original format and we're just modifying it on a per use basis, which is typically, unless like I said, we're working for an organization and there's a workflow structure that's defined, this is typically what we want to do. Okay. So just going through a couple different types of projections um, you know, it's important to note that all maps or yeah, all map projections are distortions, right? No matter what we do in our map projection, the transformation of the three dimensional to the two dimensional is going to distort one of the properties of the maps. Um, and those map properties that we think of as being distorted are your size, distance, direction, or shape. So we have, there's different classes of maps that preserve something for a specific purpose and distort other things to allow that preservation of that one uh, property. So this is a conformal projection. This is the Mercator map. And in this map, the local shapes or the angles are preserved, right? So the purpose of the conformal projection or the Merc Mercator map specifically was uh, that you could have a line of bearing from one point to the other point and you could find that angle on the map, say from Portugal to the colonies here, right? Um, you could set that angle on the map and then follow that compass bearing on your boat and it would go to the same point that the angle led to on the map. So as a conformal projection, the shape of the map was preserved in order to find those constant bearings. We also have equal area projections, right? And these maps, the size of the land area is preserved. So the shape of the continents or the shape of 
the landforms have been distorted, elongated, widened, etc. For the purpose of there being a fidelity to the land mass size as represented on the globe to the map. So these maps, they can always look a little like distorted a little bit, especially once the global view of the equal area projection, it can kind of elongate or kind of squish different um, continents in different ways. But you can see the difference, right? If you look here at the conformal projection that you can see how here how it elongates the latitude of the poles, thus making Greenland enormous, right? The same size as Africa, essentially. And then an equal area projection, we see that size differentiation is quite, quite a bit different than as projected by the conformal Mercator projection. We also have an equidistance projection. And so in the equidistance projection, the distances from a single location are preserved to all other locations. So this is a map, a type of map that's most commonly used for air travel to calculate air travel, to calculate uh, fuel expenditures that's needed for distances of trips. There's, you know, you can have the distance from Chicago, wherever that is, Chicago, to Tokyo. That distance is, uh, has a certain fidelity to, or has a fidelity to it, so you can calculate how much fuel would be necessary to get between those two points. And that's the primary purpose of an equidistance map, also for transatlantic cables, things like that. And then we have an azimuthal projection. Azimuthal projection is usually defined as a uh, being polar centered, north pole or south pole most, most often. Um, you can see here the North Pole has a directional fidelity, right? And then the Antarctica is a complete circle around because the distortion point keeps fidelity in the polar area, then distorts it as it goes outward. Um, this is used to calculate direction. This is most often used in like telecommunications, the relaying of radio and satellite signals, etc. Um, where the direction between two points is important, but all the other stuff that kind of goes around that can be distorted in order to keep the fidelity of those directions. Um, the type of map that we most often use in cartography is what's known as a compromise projection. And the compromise projection allows for a little bit of distortion in all those four different properties, size, shape, distance, um, direction. It allows for each of those to have a little bit of distortion in order to make a map that kind of looks the most right. Um, so this is what we most commonly use when we're mapping global spaces in cartography is a compromise projection. This is very common in like National Geographic or other types of publications that make world maps. Um, there's also the interrupted projection, which is just kind of a not very usable. It has good like fidelity to uh, the size and the shape and the. I mean, in in terms of its uh, mathematical accuracy, it's fairly accurate, but it's not very functional to use. And most people have kind of like a uneasy feeling having this interrupted pieces in in between. So most often good for board games and things like that, like this one as well. Another interrupted projection. That is good for like wrapping paper, but not really good for anything else. All right, then final piece. Um, there's a metric that we can use, a visual metric that we can use, and you can add these in in ArcGIS Pro as well to get a sense of, you know, what what your different projections are actually distorting. This is what's known as the Tissot um, indicacy and in, yeah, indicatrix. Um, and basically, what this is is that. If you have a globe and at each kind of intersection of major latitude and longitude points, you are to draw uh, same size circles on that globe. Then when you translate that to a map, the uh, size of the circle changes proportionally with how the map is distorted. So therefore you can see you know, how things are being distorted with different map projections. So in this case, this is a Mercator projection. Right, we can see these equal size circles here. We translate them to 
the Mercator projection that the size distorts as you get further away from the equator. Right? Other types of projections will change the angles. Right? So there's a good way to see that the angles are changing in this particular map, as well as size as you move away from that central point. This is a compromise projection, so you can see that at different points of the map, different things are distorted in different ways. Right? Whereas in the Mercator, there's a systematic distortion as you move further away from uh, the equator. Here, there's not uniform distortion because it's a compromise projection. So each, each aspect of the map projection is distorted a little bit. So this is a tool that you can use at various times to, if you want to have a better sense of like how your map is being distorted for a project, you can throw on this to so uh, indice function is just something you can add from the um, ArcGIS portal or the Living Atlas portal. You can just toss it in there and you can see you know what, what your map is actually doing, what's being distorted. And it's a little easier to see it in this capacity than seeing how it is being distorted using the landforms that are not symmetrical shapes. But by using you know the symmetrical circles, you can see a little bit better distortion and uh, and how things are being distorted. All right, then finally, for your discussion forum this week, I am going to post, and I'll have an example that I put up first, that just looks at, um, there's a basically a index of all these different types of projections, and in, in that, you just pick one that you think is interesting or that you want to know more about, and just do a little bit of uh, research about that and write a little, you know, two-paragraph mini-essay up that's talks about what's the history, who first came up with this projection. They're usually named after the person that did the algorithm, right? So Gerardus Mercator is when it, the Mercator projection is named after, for example. Um, so when was it invented? What was the purpose of that particular map projection? What were the uses through time? Uh, information about that, et cetera. What does it distort? So, you know, one one aspect of your report will be based on kind of the technical components of it, and another portion of the report will be based on the uh, historical components of it. So that will be the discussion forum prompt. It'll all come off this page, Radical Cartography, and there's just like a, a giant kind of reference page of different types of projections. They have a nice kind of visual format so you can go through and pick one that you find interesting and kind of extend or create an extended little essay from that. And I'll have an example first so you can see exactly what you need to do. All right, sounds good. I will see you in class.